Hello and welcome to Chapter 4 of Clearing the Plains by James Deschuk. Uh, this is Despair and Death During the Fur Trade Wars, 1783-1821. And yeah, with a title like that, um, you know, it's another another happy, happy chapter in this book, which I will actually talk about at the very end because I... I think probably talking about methodology and just like what, what is Deschuk kind of getting at with this accumulation of death and despair, which, you know, it's there. And I think that's probably important work. Uh, you know, first of all, happy Discovery Day. Uh, it is uh, June the 22nd. And uh, yes, in Newfoundland, uh, this is Discovery Day uh, commemorating in what is it? 1497. Uh, just five years after uh, Columbus' uh, uh, first voyage, John Cabot, who um, isn't actually John Cabot, he's Giovanni something or another, a Genoese, uh, very contemporary of of Columbus, um, you know, after getting rebuffed by the Spanish, uh, went to the uh, English and said, "Hey, want to get in, get on get in on this stuff? Let's find a a, a place to the the or to the Orient instead of the Orient, of course." He uh, landed. He landed in. Uh, he. Let's try and get that semi straight. He landed uh, in Newfoundland, and uh, he, while he didn't discover gold and spices, he did discover cod, which would then. And now there's actually a good cu couple of questions there. Whether this was actually a discovery, uh, well, other than just you know, hey, all the native people standing around, but also just the fact that um, there's probably actually a lot of fishermen who had already been using the the Grand Bank. So he's he is at least considered the first intellectual uh discoverer of uh of of uh of of the North America of Newfoundland and all that area. Um so yes, at least he figured out ah there's something in the way. We want to get we want to get past all this crap and get to the get to the Orient to uh to China and stuff like that for the great trade and stuff like that. But unfortunately for them, uh Canada was in the way. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So that was a big, big diversion of just like, what's this? This is the context of where I live in. I live in a country where uh, we celebrate the discovery of something that was already there. Um, but this is talking about uh, despair and death during the fur trade wars uh, of uh, 1783 to 1821. Uh, and uh, like, like the last chapter, we are in the midst of... Um, a horrible, horrible social demographic uh, crisis. It's a, it's a crisis of, of, of everything. This is starvation, disease, malnutrition. Uh, you know, basically that the whole, um, the, the native tribes that are there, the indigenous tribes that are there are getting constantly destroyed and redrawn. And this gets fueled by the fur trade and the, the, the competition between, uh, the British, uh, the HBC, Hudson Bay Company, uh, and the, uh, the, uh, kind of the French, the French, uh, the, um, Canadians, uh, and their various different ventures, which by the end of this are going to kind of start uniting into one larger front. Uh, this was a time of like extreme, of course, in the middle of all this, of, of just the horrible disease and stuff like this, this was also an extremely harsh climactic time with like super big waves and, and, um, and, uh, basically they had the longest and most severe drought in 500 years at this point, which is just like, God damn it. Uh, and also the, there's the problem of that, um, this new creature that had been introduced to North America, horses, uh, when the hor when the really really cold weather came, uh, the horses are not adapted to this kind of weather, and they died off. And the thing is, horses have become so crucial to the uh, native people of the cl of the plains uh, economy, uh, like you know how to get around, how to hunt, how to do everything. Uh, that them dying caused basically more desperation. So you had horse raids, uh, and you know basically more raiding other other tribes um more murder and death which continues all the way up until like the 1870s uh of, of this thing of suddenly you have this terrible need for something uh when, and also because you're ending up like a monoculture of the, the bison you need the horses and all that stuff so and as we add on to that there's also the fact that 
uh, the uh, both uh, the the both the HBC and the Canadians, though the Canadians are the ones who get uh, seem to seem to get most focus, at least in the literature, for um, really pushing alcohol spirits uh, on on the native populations and using that as a major a trading thing to get the natives to bring bring furs, trap furs, and bring it the super lucrative fur trade. Bring those things to them. And indeed, HB the Hudson Bay Company seems to get kind of slightly cut out of it because uh, from Montreal, uh, the Canadians were able to get super potent uh, rum and and spirits to to the natives to such an extent that uh, the the HBC basically found themselves frozen out of the thing. But um, while alcohol would have been present present in uh, the indigenous kind of cultures as kind of a uh, spiritual kind of ritualized thing, uh, now it was full blown. Uh, you know the social ill that it is that it is today amongst all our populations of uh, you know extreme alcoholism. Um, you know basically being drunk for two three days and lots of violence. Uh, and just basically, you know, social breakdown there. There were tribes that really tried to stay away from this stuff. Uh, there's the Ananin, um, who kind of get characterized as like the most kind of rational and inoffensive kind of group of, of the, of the tribes who actually made a very conscious effort. Like, it's like, well, why didn't they just like, why didn't native tribes just like stay away from all these traders? And like, they tried, there's these tribes that do try this, like they stay, they stay away because they know that, you know, alcohol and disease seems to come from these new, these new peoples. Um, uh, and, uh, there's, there's other ones too. The, um, the, um, uh, there's, uh, the Chippewa and, and the Danesia, uh, but they were either, Attack like the Anian were like are like their enemies. Enemy tribes were armed by the traders uh, to uh, attack, and basically they became easy prey to be attacked. And they basically kind of kept on withdrawing and withdrawing until basically by the end uh, they withdrew uh, out of what would become Canada into American territory, where I believe they are still today. Uh, but you have like other tribes that also tried to do this. But you have traders who basically had practices of it's like, you know, if they, if you wouldn't take the alcohol, well, then we've got, we'll assault you, we'll murder you, we'll kidnap, kidnap, kidnapping of women. There was a, apparently there seemed to be a, a, a slave trade uh, going. Uh, there's someone, uh, David Livingston, uh, who was sort of seen as like, oh, here's somebody who kind of can impose um, respect for, for the white, for white people on thing. It's like, yeah, because he was uh, engaging in a booming uh, slave trade uh, in women. Uh, on on this thing, so it's like you know the most really vile and terrible kind. Of, these these are just like you know it's it's a horrible thugs and gang gangs who are you, you know basically anything to get their goods out of these areas and uh, getting the goods out of the areas regardless of uh, what kind of climate what kind of damage it will do to some of these places which are very kind of arid very kind of delicate ecosystems which. You know, people had lived lived in, but not that many people lived in for hundreds and hundreds of years, and they were very careful about how they managed things. Uh, stuff like the beaver were extremely; they were, you know, beavers um, making dams, gathering water was a really big thing in this such an arid, dry environment. But beaver hats, pelts uh, were super valuable, so th that was all mowed down. Um, Food was, they desperately needed food in these areas, so they'd kill everything in the area, basically making it in uninhabitable. Uh, that's why the bison trade was such a big thing, because you'd get the meat, you'd, you'd cure the meat, and that would be, you'd have something to, something to actually eat. But, I mean, it just destroyed, destroyed areas. And indeed, by the end of this period, they just basically say the, the, the fur trade's ruined in these areas because um, they just ripped, they exploited everything they could out of the stuff. And I mean... This is in the context of like severe drought, uh, explosions of diseases, zoonotic diseases, uh, something, some stuff, uh, diseases jumping from beavers to human beings, um, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> so yeah, by 1820, fur trades basically is ruined, ruined in these areas, gets ruined in these, uh, in the, the plains. And there's a consult, consult, uh, consolidation of like the Canadian companies and a scaling back of the H of HBC uh, as like there's basically a social demographic and environmental crisis in the area. Uh, 
And, you know, it, there, <laughs> of course, in the middle of all this, not, not only is all there's this stuff happening, there is also that there was an eruption of a volcano uh, in Indonesia, Mount, uh, Mount Tambor, which caused basically a year without, without, you know, a year without the sun. Like, you know, there was no summer that year. Uh, which further exacerbated things and you get actual kind of, there's rebellions and you see the n- native populations trying to actually fight off the traders, but they're so decimated that um, they've kind of missed the ch- their chance to actually be able to fight. And there's more and more traders coming in, more and more white settler people coming in. Um, and, you know, HBC even itself like says like, okay, we need to pull back kind of scale back operation, basically kind of a, a night, the recognition that they had to basically kind of, we need to pull, we need to pull people back, pe- pull these people back from the brink of disaster. If it wasn't, you know, sort of disaster already. Um, these, yeah, these chapters are, are kind of grinds. They're, they're, they're a kind of an onslaught of you know, bad thing after bad thing after bad thing and just people dying and dying and dying. But I think it's really important work. Uh, it, I can see it's this, this is Daschuk kind of slowly and carefully making his case of like, this is why this is, this situation is the way it is. Uh, we're going to get up into kind of Canadian history, history, where we're going to have the, what's going to be the fledgling kind of, uh, we're going to start off with like, you know, the HBC kind of settlement in the area in the next chapter. The next chapter is uh, expansion of settlement and the erosion of health during the HBC uh, monopoly, uh, 1821 to, to 69, which will then lead to the Canadian government. And um, I think it's it's really kind of foundational work of we need to set the scene. Dashuk needs to set the scene, needs to say, this is how we got to this situation here. This is very much a result of uh, the disease coming in, coming into the area, which you can't necessarily uh, just hang, hang on the, 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 um, the Europeans who came in, they just didn't know, weren't aware, but there's a lot of this other stuff like this fur trade and how this kind of rot, this stuff and the bringing in of alcohol uh, and uh, just like the horrible tactics used. Uh, This is like all stuff setting up like, gee, I wonder why maybe native people weren't really that happy to see, um, Europeans in this area. It's like, these are the reasons why. So I think this is really good foundational work, even though it's kind of a tough, tough thing to go through. Uh, I'm finding actually useful. I'm doing this as a read along with Sean, the book maniac, and we're just kind of doing a chapter a week because it's like, it's good to set with each chapter and let it go. Uh, and I'm also trying to, I'm reading, uh, um, Canadian history for dummies by Will Ferguson at the same time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I uh, haven't actually caught up to this time period yet, but he's already kind of talked about uh, the boat buck, boat bunk, uh, on in 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 Newfoundland and how th- it was basically genocide that that you know they used basically genocidal tactics to wipe out. They cut off their food. They basically put a bounty on and they just killed killed all the native people on the thing. And the, you know, he's saying like, Oh, you know, some people say, Oh, we shouldn't use the word genocide. That's, that's like Nazis and in, in, in death camps. It's like, it's like, and he stops and says, no, here's the definition. Here is from the, the actual Geneva convention. Here is the definition of genocide. Let me list it out for you. Now look at that. And then look at the events that I've per- portrayed here. And I mean, and I mean, Ferguson is coming from this, from this is history of Canada which in a way is implicit saying this is a history of uh, the Europeans who've come to this North America area and made imposed Canada on top of this part of North America that had been inhabited by many various tribes. So it is coming from the perpetrator's perspective, but it's like, Hey, we should admit to ourselves that the people who set up this country committed genocide. And we've just done here, but I'm going to be interested to see as we go forward. I mean, at the moment we're, it's, it's like individual individuals and a, you know, Canadian kind of uh, in, individual business ventures and the HBC are doing really nasty stuff in an area, which um, I mean, HBC has been given a charter to operate in the area. Uh, the Canadians, I think are a little bit more loosey goosey of like, yeah, go ahead and do stuff, but they're, be, they're getting away. They are getting away with murder with, with, with kidnapping, with slavery in this area, um, all with those colonial governments basically either turning a blind eye 
uh, but for the profit for for them for the furs coming in for what they're what they're getting out of it so um <laughs> but yeah we're going to get into uh what as a canadian when we get a kind of a formation of the canadian government and their culpability in this and what they've done uh will be um will be good to learn as a canadian uh, living today in 2020 all right that's what i have i'm going to go check in with sean basically do that all again. All right. More videos later.